I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is a very nice uh, mirror on stand. It's a solid mahogany, probably from the late uh, 19th, early 20th century when mahogany furniture was so popular. It's a, it's a family heirloom. It means a lot to them. And unfortunately, it was stored in a situation where there was a deep freeze. A bottle here uh, froze and broke, causing this really bad stain. It's also missing a bit of a finial, missing a little inlay, and in the course of repairing this stain, uh, I'll end up refinishing the entire piece. I'll start, as always, by taking it apart. Now there's only one washer on the right side. Did I lose the washer? Did I not notice there wasn't a washer there? I'll take a close look at that. It almost looks like a countersink. That burnished area is wood though. And this right side, which I know had a washer on it, you can see where the washer was. So I think it only had one washer on this side. It must have had something to do with uh, making the frame fit in here. Yeah. I expected screws, but these are dowels. These drip marks make me wonder if it's been refinished before. Looking at the bottom of it, you immediately notice this writing, like in crayon, and it's also stamped here, 235, the same as that. You notice a tack, which undoubtedly secured a label to the bottom of this. You notice that this bottom isn't mahogany, it's some other kind of wood. Oh yeah, I hadn't noticed this initially, but this is the... Uh, you know, your face veneer. This is your underlayment here. The grain runs uh, perpendicular to the top grain of the top piece. And this top is a looks like a thick mahogany veneer also. So this is what you might call a, a solid core panel. So the core wood is solid wood uh, with the grain running this way. And then that is covered on each side with two layers of veneer an underlayment with the grain running perpendicularly and then face veneers grain running in the same direction it's a great way to uh, build anything so let's uh, let's get that veneer glued up this little foot doesn't want to come off I'm gonna to have to figure out a way to work around it
I use hide glue for these repairs, specifically this old brown glue. I like using it in a syringe. Can't forget about the underlayment. I got a little piece of inlay missing there too. I'll have to see if I can get that in there. These are all my strips like this. Uh, I need to find a really thin one. This block doesn't want to sit right. And this foot and these clamps are in the way. I need a I need to try a different clamp. It's rocking because the piece of inlay is too thick. At this point, I think I'll just leave it alone. Almost forgot about this little piece of inlay too. Okay. I'm going to uh, let these dry overnight. All right, let's see what we got here. It's funny, I was looking at this, I want to work on this uh, stain, get started on this, and I notice it's cracked, so we've got to glue that up. There's, uh, there's glue all inside this crack. It must have been uh, split and re-glued before. I'm going to try to scrape some of this glue off if I can. I don't want to break this apart. I don't want to lose what little connection I have up here. You can use heat, water, vinegar also to soften glue. Sometimes it's quicker just to give it a quick scrape. So what I can do is uh, trim these patches and then we can work on that stain.
So I'll make a pad out of a, a oh, this is an old sheet. Boy, the, the color is just not instantly coming back. This blackness is tough, but it seems to be uh, superficial. Well, I feel like it's uh, pretty obvious that I just have to take, I'm, I'm going to take alcohol and clean this whole surface down. Let's <clears throat> see if alcohol will take this finish off. So I'm using uh, zero steel wool and denatured alcohol, methylated spirits. The color's coming back to the, of the wood itself, but which is good. Uh, of course, the ring's still there. There's a few different solvents you could use to uh, get the finish off this piece: uh, lacquer thinner, acetone. Uh, methylene chloride. I like alcohol though. Uh, it seems like the least intrusive and uh, it dries quickly. I just like it. So after the initial uh, clean down here, you can see how dirty the alcohol is, but now I'll take clean alcohol, clean piece of steel wool, and go over it again. Always remember to wipe off the bottom. And of course this already had a bunch of drip marks on it before it came here. I think that were original. I still have to clean down the mirror frame. I've got to tape off the glass. But when I was doing this piece, I discovered another piece of inlay missing, and I want to get that glued in this evening. This is a 1 16th chisel. I just bought a, a relatively inexpensive quarter inch chisel and ground it down to 1 16th.
often you'll hear me say, I'm not going to sand something, and then later you see me sanding it. Well, when I say I'm not going to sand it, I mean I'm not going to sand it down to raw wood, try to make it look brand new. I'm not going to sand away natural wear marks and, and other defects. Uh, sometimes you have to sand repairs. Uh, in this case, I really want to, I'm going to go over this lightly by hand with 220. I want to open this wood up so that it will accept the oxalic acid treatment. And then of course where you have repairs, sometimes you need to sand. Sometimes you can be lucky like on this piece where I can just smooth it with a chisel and not sand. I can see that this is going to need a little wood putty. I'll use FAMO wood. When that dries, it's pretty easy to sand, so I won't need to sand much. So I just want to open this up a little bit. I want to see just a little bit of sawdust. In this position, it's easy to see that this, uh, this, this edge and molding definitely need more cleaning with the alcohol. I'm going to use a Scotch-Brite maroon pad for this. It just gives me a little bit more control. I'm just trying to do a small area here. Well, here's that uh, little bit of family wood I put there. This whole uh, section of inlay seems to be ra raised up a little bit, yet it doesn't feel loose. There's basically two ways you can percuss. One with the pad of your finger, and then with your fingernail. Sometimes one works, sometimes the other works. This is so thick, I'm not sure that helps at all. I don't think I can use a knife to get under this. There's no opening. It's a little bit there, but it, this is just too thick. You know, I'll just, uh, I think I'm going to heat this up with the heat gun and clamp it down. And if that doesn't work, I mean, that's all I'm going to try. I'll put the heat gun on medium setting and I'll set a timer for two minutes. I thought I saw some movement, but that could have been my imagination too. So how do you know it's hot enough? You don't. Uh, the setting on this, the middle setting, it says uh, about 450 degrees centigrade. That's pretty hot. Uh, I have no way to measure that. Uh, but doing it for two minutes, 15 centimeters away, uh, certainly didn't do any harm. So I'll do it once or twice more. If it moves, I know it's hot enough. I don't know. It, I've done this for a total of uh, 10 minutes. It feels hot to the touch. I don't detect any movement, but uh, hey, we'll see. Well, I'll say that this block definitely looks flat. 
Looks like it's down. Who knows, maybe that uh, actually worked. We'll find out in a little while. So I'll be able to uh, take these clamps off in a few hours. And in the meantime, I can go ahead and uh, uh, start setting up to use oxalic acid on everything else. Oh, I've been putting off dealing with this nail. All these devices, but uh, for this, I uh, usually go with the side cutters because I'm going to try to pull it out. This is the chunk of veneer that's missing from the top there. Well, I got the side cutters out. I usually don't go crazy trying to get every little thing off, but I'm beginning to realize that this whitish stuff, I think, is, is the substance that spilled all over this thing. This is, the, this is the pillar that has the stain in it, and I think that's what this stuff is. All right, let's, uh, let's try taking the clamps off. It's been about four hours. I don't think it's really changed that much. Yeah, that little edge is still there. See, these are high points too. They sanded through instantly, you know, like with literally one swipe of 220 paper. So what do you do? The only thing that you could do was be to sand this down uh, level, in which case it would look like it's brand new along with the rest of this piece. So uh, I'm just not going to do anything. So what I will do is sand around the medallion and, uh, and then during the finishing process I'll have to touch up those little light areas right there. Okay, it's time to apply the oxalic acid. I don't use precise measurements. I usually will mix about 60 or 70 grams and a half liter of water. You can run hot water from the tap. Ours will run about 60 degrees centigrade. But the shop is so far away from the boiler, I have to run about seven and a half liters to get that. So sometimes I'll just put some water on the kettle. It's about 68 degrees. This is the one that was stained right along here. I should have mentioned you just can't use exolic just on the stain. If you're going to do any part of it, you've got to do all of it. Even the bottom, because you can't have trip marks on the bottom. Okay, I'm going to let this dry overnight. Now, I've treated the entire mirror stand, uh, but I might sneak back in here later this evening, and if I think that these areas need some more, I can put some more just on those areas. Okay, about uh, four hours has gone by. It's having some effect. I think I'm going to coat this piece down again. This is the same mixture I was using before. Uh, all right, mark's still there. Interestingly, I mean, the mark is not dark anymore. It's, it's almost too light. You can still see these dark areas too. But I'm not too worried about those. So I'm going to rinse this off in the sink, let it dry, 
sand just a little bit with 220 and then decide if I need to do this again. Not looking bad, obviously it's still there, but uh, it's good. What I really want to do is sort of, well you want to get the stain out as much as you can, but I want to break up, this, nice to break up that circle. Uh, but I'm pleased with how it looks overall. And we'll let it dry. Alright, this is dried for, oh I don't know, four or five hours. And uh, it's interesting, the grain didn't raise on the piece except where this damaged area is. That's raised and I want to sand it a little bit and uh, just with 220 again. I'll wipe it with a little alcohol just to see what it looks like. That's not bad. I think I'm going to uh, sand this again just lightly with 220 and I'm going to put on a more concentrated solution. While I'm waiting on the kettle I might as well rinse off the other pieces. This is the piece that had the stain on it. Okay, this water is almost boiling, and I'm only going to pour a quarter liter in here instead of a half, like I did yesterday. I'll start again with the 60, 70 grams of oxalic. Now I'm going to do it again. So I ultimately put about uh, 175 grams of oxalic acid in here. I believe it's a, uh, you know, it's a super saturated solution. So that's strong. All right. We'll uh, let that dry overnight. All right. Uh, I can't wait to rinse this off. A quick word about oxalic acid. Oxalic acid is not in and of itself a dangerous uh, substance. It's found naturally in a lot of foods, most notably spinach. We eat a lot of spinach. It's used in hospital laundries. It's used in teeth whitening products. It's used by beekeepers for mite control. It has a lot of industrial applications. And of course, we use it as a bleach, although technically not a bleach because it returns objects to their natural color. I apologize for being blasé yesterday when I mixed up that super saturated solution of oxalic acid. Uh, it's easy to become complacent uh, because it's, it's not dangerous in its solid form. By that I mean in this container, you know, it's, it's clumpy. It's not coming out into the atmosphere. Uh, if, you, if you were breathing this, you would know it immediately. Here it's in solution of water, so it's not going anywhere. As long as you don't spill this, that would be, uh, then you're getting into a situation where pets or children could get into it. Where it becomes most dangerous in the shop is when you breathe this dust. And that's why it's so important to get rid of this oxalic acid. I'm rinsing these off in the sink with plenty of water. If you can't do it in the sink or the bathtub or the shower, Take it outside. Do it in the driveway with a garden hose. Oh man, I was looking forward to seeing that gone. Well, let's just let it dry and I'll sand it a little bit more. Isn't soaking down your furniture with water bad for it? I mean, it's kind of uh, intuitive. And yeah, it would be, but this isn't soaking. I put it on and wiped it off. Anything comes loose, well, it, it needed to get glued down anyway. It was already loose. If you've glued up all your veneer, made all your repairs, 
it's fine. Ah, okay, it, it looks good. Obviously it's still there, but it looks light. And that's a good, uh, that's a good thing. Once again, I'm going to go over this uh, just very lightly with 220. It feels smooth. There's no raised grain, really. Uh, and I'm going to wipe it off with the Mohawk wax wash remover. Now it's when sanding that you're going to find out if you've rinsed off the oxalic acid well enough. Uh, the sanding dust, if there's oxalic acid in this, that dust is going to be an extreme irritant. So uh, be sure to uh, open a window, put on a fan. Uh, I'm going to put on the air cleaner. But I think I've rinsed this really well because it's such a small object. Okay, this was rinsed well. I don't smell any oxalic. And if you did, you would know it right away, believe me. Now I'm going to wash this off, see what this looks like. I'm going to use this uh, uh, Mohawk wax wash remover. It's just a proprietary solvent. Uh, it helps remove uh, contaminants and stuff. Here I'm just using it to see what this looks like. And also, you know, it might remove some contaminants if they're on there. So presumably, this is what it's going to look like when I put a coat of finish on it. I like it because maybe I can uh, color up these light areas a little bit, and that will uh, really help it a lot. All right, I'm going to go ahead and apply the first coat of varnish. Uh, and uh, I'm going to use these foam brushes. You know, these are sold as disposable brushes, but I keep them in the uh, paint thinner. They last quite a while. I did my last job with this. I'll do this job with it. I'm going to go straight to this uh, finish I like so much, the Waterlox Original Tongue Oil Varnish. I'm not going to use any type of sealer like shellac. Uh, I love the color of this varnish. It'll, it'll penetrate deeper and give a richer color. I want to take full advantage of this uh, deep, uh, rich kind of garnet color of the finish. Here's those two darker marks. Oh, it's still there, but I still like it. What I like is where this end of the ellipse is gone. That's a light spot from that original bad stain. Oh yeah, this dried, uh, this dried really well. I'm thinking I should uh, maybe try to touch up this ring a little bit before the next coat. I'm going to use some uh, dye stain. I'm using Perfect Brown. It has a lot less red in it. I'm going to fix it 50-50 with some alcohol. It 
Looks like it's too dark. It's definitely brown, which I wanted it. I'm going to let that dry and put a little solvent on it and see what it looks like. Okay, well now that we've got uh, time while things are drying, uh, I have not forgotten about the finials. Let's get back to this uh, touch-up. I'll put a little alcohol on it. Okay, that got rid of the part that was too dark. Alright, I'm going to do the same thing except I'm going to uh, thin out that stain even more. Putting about the same amount of alcohol in as I did the first time around. Still looks like it might be a little too dark. It's kind of hard to tell sometimes. I'll, uh, I'll let this dry. I'll come back to it in a little while and uh, maybe put some paint thinner on it and see what it looks like. Okay, back to the turning. the touch up. This time I'll put a little paint thinner on it. I'm hoping that you know doesn't take off any of my stain. It's definitely you know improved over this area so I think I'm going to go ahead and color that in as best I can.
Okay, I'm going to go just put a coat on this, uh, everything else too, and uh, then I can really see what it looks like. It's funny because the camera can see this a lot better than I can. We'll find out when I put a coat on it. There's too much glare. Doesn't look that different, does it? dry overnight. Well I tell you it's funny from here you absolutely cannot see that ring but you know standing over it yeah it's still there. It's getting harder and harder to see it. Um, clearly the dark lines here there's not much I can do about but there's lots of places that are still lighter. So uh, I'm going to sand with 320 pre-cut gold and then add color to those light areas and then give it another coat. Oh, I almost forgot. When I was putting on the coat yesterday, I noticed that this little piece looks like it finally decided to come up. My hide glue is not heated up, so I'm going to sneak a little tight bond under there. Don't tell anybody. Okay, I'm going to wipe this off with some of uh, the Mohawk wax wash remover and then uh, put more dye stain on those light areas. You know, if, if a piece of furniture has a defect in it and uh, you have to say to somebody, oh geez, well you can only see it if it's if a bright sunny day and get down at this angle you can see it, you know what? You're done. Because the chatoyance of the wood and everything, you know, it changes as you walk around it. And if you get this too dark, it'll look bad. And I still have that little light area right here which is the only part of the stain on this piece that remains. All right, another coat. I'm not going to put a coat on the mirror frame because it's clamped up. But I'll get a coat on these two. This will just be fall behind. All right, let's get back to that little finial. So I need to cut this right there.
and uh, slightly off center. Uh, all right, I'll figure out what I'm going to do. Um, but in the meantime, I did sustain a little chip here. I don't know when that happened. I can't find a chip. I'm going to fill that in with some putty before I glue this on. A little water helps keep it from sticking. Even though my hole is slightly off center, it lines up pretty well this way. It's off in the back. I'm going to mark the front here, and then I think I'll pair a little bit off of that little dowel on there so I can move it back and move it into position when I glue it. It's a looser fit now, but this isn't uh, structural. I'll just fill the hole with hide glue and set it in there. Now I can take this clamp off and get a coat on this frame uh, along with everything else. Good, that's down now. This medallion is still not, you know, completely flat. So instead of sanding it with sandpaper, I'm going to use a uh, Scotch Bite gray pad to abrade it. Then I'll put a little color on these spots and give it a coat. Okay, now I'll sand these other three parts again with 320 and, uh, and put another coat on. Remember that I mentioned uh, this was veneer. You can see the underlayment here in two places, so that's got to be touched up. Okay, I've got everything sanded up, ready for a coat. Uh, I think I've got enough finish on here now that I'm going to put the uh, final coat of satin. I hope it's the final coat. And we'll celebrate what I hope is the final coat with a new brush. I'll also put a coat on the bottom. Second coat. There's that pesky ring. And I'm going to do these pieces in a horizontal position so I can get a nicer finish on them. This is the support that had such a bad stain in here. Luckily that went away really nicely. All right, uh, I'm going to turn the heat up tonight and tomorrow we'll tackle those uh, finials. Oh, wow, it, uh, it looks good except, uh, boy, there was a little bit of a fisheye problem here on the top. Interesting. I was planning on sanding this with uh, 800 and then going over it with steel wool. So hopefully I'll be able to get those little fish eyes out. If I can't, then I'll put another coat on it and hopefully it won't fish eye. But in the meantime, I've got to start back on the finials. I'm going to clean them with a little bit of that uh, Mohawk wash wax remover. You can see the color difference after it's clean. It's actually, you know, like the rest of the piece.
This is the same stain I was using for the touch-ups. These dye stains dry quickly. Uh, it's been about an hour. I'm going to go ahead and brush shellac on that. Color looks good so far. This dried for about an hour and a half. It soaked in really well. I'm going to give it another coat. Shellac's been on for about an hour. It's not dry yet, but I realized I've cleaned these. I'm going to braid them and give it another coat. Okay, we've got a lousy final coat because of the fish eye. I'm going to sand it though with this 800 free cut paper and hopefully we'll get all that out. And they seem to be coming right out. All right, to sand it up really well. There's a few little fish eyes remaining. Uh, I'll go at it with steel wool now. Okay, this looks great. Now there's still one more step. I'm going to use steel wool and wax, but I won't do that till after I uh, glue these mirror supports on. And I don't need to sand these other parts. Uh, they're all vertical. And I'll go over them just quickly with dry steel wool and then the steel wool and the wax. Okay, I don't think the finials need anything, and so the next step is to glue these supports to the stand. There's a very high rate of probability that these are where they need to be. There's not a lot of room to move, but I'll try the mirror out anyway. Even before I, I don't know that I need to clamp them. Yeah, that looks fine. I'm still, I'm going to take this off though. Okay, I think tomorrow we'll be able to do the final assembly. All right. Let's uh, polish this up and assemble it. You'll often see me using this uh, beeswax and orange oil polish with steel wool, but I just steel wooled this yesterday, so being newly finished, don't have to. install the mirror I want to put uh, felt tabs on the bottom of the feet. You know I should glue these finials in before I install the mirror. So there we go. 
What a nice uh, mirror on stand. If you remember, the, the worst thing was a really bad stain in this area here, uh, extending up this support. And of course, some of the stain's still there, but uh, I kind of forgot about it. It's very unnoticeable. Also, uh, there was some uh, missing inlay in a couple places, like right there. There was uh, finial was missing, and then it, you know it had to be refinished because the finish was just totally ruined. The stain was down into the wood and everything, but. Uh, you know, I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? Huh? I got about uh, I got about eight hours in this job, and I used the uh, table saw, the lathe, and the bandsaw, and the drill press, and these hand tools. And if you like my videos, please like and subscribe. And feel free to post them on other platforms like Facebook or Reddit. I'd appreciate it.